Hi Brewers, I'm Daniel with Keg King. We're going to look at the new design lids for Fermenter King Jr. Fermenter King Jr. has been a fantastic product. Works as either a keg or a pressure fermenter with a floating pickup tube. We've changed the lid design just slightly to make it better. It seals, it's easier to put together. I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's start by opening the box. And on top you'll find a sticker with the warnings and safe usage instructions for your tank. After two years, make sure that you either pressure check this tank or just get a new Fermenter King tank. The next thing is the bag of all the parts. There is a new volume sticker that goes to the outside of the tank that will show you in indications of one liter how full your tank is. You also have a stick-on thermometer, the lid assembly, and the pickup tube assembly. And of course, the most important part, the 20 liter Fermenter King pressure fermenting keg body. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a bung to the inside of this PRV chamber. When these are used as kegs, um, it's a different plastic material and a pressure relief valve is inserted into this chamber here. But when we use it as Fermenter King Junior, we use this crystal clear plastic and we put a bung to the inside of this chamber to seal it off. You'll have a pressure relief valve, a PRV, that sits in the lid. It's a red PRV that's gonna lift at 2.4 bar and to ensure the safe operation of this when in use as a pressure fermenter. We'll go ahead and we'll find that bung that seals up the inside of this in this bag here. So we're gonna put it to the inside and it's quite simply gonna be fit right into that PRV chamber, quite snug. Just press it in so that the upper seal of it sits flush against the neck of the tank. This is the new Fermenter King lid. Um, it's gonna seat inside the neck because there's a, now an O-ring that goes around the sides of it. The older model had an O-ring that sat on top of the neck and then you push down with the collar to get that to seal. Some people had issue with that. These ones are much better. Um, what I think is better with these to get a better seal is just make sure it's a bit moist when you push it into place. Um, and it will sit in the neck just like that. Now before we go any further, you're gonna need to locate the post. There's a gas post and a liquid post. The gas post will have a small notch on the post, but this one is the gas post. You can tell because on this post right here, there is a notch in the metal, which lets you know that that's the gas. In all the Cornelius ball lock equipment, gas is always notched. The other side won't be notched, that'll be our liquid side. We'll go ahead and the first thing you're gonna do is push through the dip tube with the O-ring into either one of these two threaded ports on the top of the lid. Each one of these posts has a spring and a poppet that fit inside of it. So fit the spring inside so that the poppet seals the hole in the post and slide it on top of the dip tube that you've just put on there. Now, I'm gonna ask what you do is you push down and then twist like you're going to be unscrewing it into place on this threading. And you'll feel right there where the steel threading on the inside of the post is getting purchased on the threading that's on the lid. And once you've got that, you can go ahead and screw it straight into place. Once again, start by pushing the dip tube through one of the threaded ports in the lid. Just like that. Get your post, spring, and pop it. We'll start by pushing down. And then right there, when you feel it catching the thread, use your fingers to tighten it. Now locate your red pressure relief valve. That's gonna thread right into the port between the two posts on the lid. So now that you've got those in place, you can remove the lid and we're going to put the dip tube on here. So again, a little bit of liquid sanitizer. So you're gonna be looking for the liquid port, the one that doesn't have a notch on the post. And underneath on this dip tube, you're just going to go ahead and seat onto the dip tube. So that's now hanging off of the liquid dip tube or the liquid post. The dip tube is now hanging off of the liquid post. So now we'll attach the float ball to this side. So go ahead and locate this item here. This is your float ball. And this is the float ball tube. You're gonna go ahead and push 
the silicon tube onto the float ball. So now you've got your silicon tube onto the float ball tube just like this. And it's time to put this into your pressure fermenter. Push down on the lid to seal it into place inside the neck. Locate your plastic collar for the lid assembly and screw it right down. If you're using this as a keg, you can simply fill up through the liquid tube as you would any other Cornelius keg by doing a liquid transfer from your pressure fermenter or from whatever fermenter you're working with and straight down the liquid tube. You, of course, will fill this with sanitizer first and then push all the sanitizer out with gas so that you leave behind a sanitized, clean, ready-to-go fermenter with no air in it. And then when you top up, you either have your PRV open so that it can vent the pressure as you fill, or you use your spunding valve on the gas port so that you can control the pressure of your fill through the liquid tube. As it fills, it's going to release some of that pressure and you can work the pressure that you'd like to keep in the vessel as you fill it. So you'll reduce foaming that way. Now, one last thing I'm gonna show you is how to put these um, volume stickers onto the tank. So locate that volume sticker and you'll see on one side of it, the 20 liter mark has a red line just above it. That red line's gonna sit right where the neck meets the tank body on this fermenter. So what we'll do is we'll peel off just that first part of it and we'll set that red line up at the neck and then we'll just peel this sticker right back down. And as you can see on this one, I'm putting it so the red line's right at the join of the neck and where the tank then sticks out from the neck. And then, trying to smooth out the bubbles that happen. That's your volume marking on this fermenter all the way to the outside. Put the stick on thermometer on her so you get an idea of the ambient temperature. It's not super accurate, but it gives you an idea. And that can go anywhere you want on the outside of it. So Fermenter King Junior, the 20 liter pressure fermenting keg. This is the complete new build out for it with the new lid assembly. It's got a much better seal than the older ones, we think, um, but we still didn't have very many problems with the old ones either. This one's just a better, easier put together um, for people without tools. You're just gonna use your fingers to be able to get everything as tight as you need to, to get a good seal. So once you've got it all together, you just need to check for any leaks. The places that you're gonna look with soapy water or spray sanitizer so you get bubbling, you'll fill it with some water or sanitizer, You'll pressurize it to about 10 PSI, and then check the posts that they're sealing on top and where they meet up at the bottom where there's, they're connected near the lid. Check the PRV and the PRV chamber to see if you're getting any leaking in there. And other than that, there really isn't any other place to come out of this fermenter except maybe under here between the lid and the tank body. So the only other thing to know about with these kegs is to never wash them with hot water. Boiling water and PET are not friends. They will warp. So what you need to do is just make sure that you mix in your cleaners and sanitizers well under 50 degrees centigrade. Somewhere around 40 degrees is about right. Dissolve your cleaner in, get it inside here. You can use a keg washer if you need to. You can also just do it by hand. Fill it up and let the cleaners do the work of cleaning for you. The super smooth interiors are really easy to remove fermentation residues after fermentation. So you'll be able to use cleaner to clean it, sanitize the back up, and throw in whatever you'd like to. We've been using ours for ciders, meads, wines, beers, everything. And it's a great handy little tank to have in any brewery situation. More and more brewers are finding out about them worldwide, and they're really happy with the ability to have just a little bit more going while they've got other bigger batches going as well. They're easy, you can fit two of these in a series four fridge. And of course, each and every single one of these is pressure tested off the line. We make sure that they are all pressure checked so they're safe for operation, much safer than any other PET pressure fermenters out there on the market today. We're really proud of this and we know that you're gonna enjoy using them. So please brewers, enjoy them and we'll see you next time. See ya.